It's hardly noticeable as the HSTs thunder through it today, but this is the site of Old Tiverton Junction, the beginning of the Calm Valley branch. The platforms are still here with some other obscure historical relics. Apart from that, it's a who knows and even who cares scenario. It was not so long ago, well about 50 years anyway, that this was a mini hive of activity, serving the main line to Plymouth in Penzance and branch lines to Tiverton and the X Valley, as well as the line to Hemyuck. It opened on the 1st of May 1844. By March of 1876, the Bristol and Exeter Railway had laid a third line between the broad gauge from Taunton to Exeter, so that standard gauge trains could reach into the southwest. So, from the outset, the Colm Valley Light Railway was able to connect with the main line. Without runaround, the carriage was backed up the gradient, the engine moved into a short refuge siding, and the carriage was free-wheeled back into the platform. On the 12th of May 1986, Tiverton Junction Station closed when Tiverton Parkway was opened a short way up the road. In 1992, the old station buildings were demolished, and that was that. To give an idea of the geographical location of the old line from Tiverton Junction to Hemyuck, the film's director and cameraman, Phil Lilly, captured these aerial shots. Below you can see the M5 motorway just above the old Tiverton station site. From his elevated position, Phil found it difficult to locate the old Calm Valley Railway track bed, which today has been partially obscured by industrial and housing estates. To help identify the line further, we will graphically highlight the approximate areas where the branch operated. We are now on our way through the valley to the first stop, Cold Harbour Halt. Even though it's February, the view from here is quite breathtaking. The feature of Cold Harbour today is the Working Woolen Museum, a tourist attraction in the midst of the most luscious surroundings. The halt opened on the 23rd of February 1929. It was in austere and simple, built of solid timber. There was a waiting room, or should I say hut, a concrete lamp post with an oil lamp and a station sign almost a third of the length of the platform. Rumour had it, in the early days, that the crossing keeper used to take the hut and lamp post home with him each night to combat vandalism. Hmm. The keeper's hut was of typical GWR design, and the approach for passengers was crude to say the least. And just look at that notice board. Got any chalk, anyone? But despite its simplicity, there was a warm, quaint feel to it all. But alas, it all disappeared around November of 1963, and today a car park for the Woolen Museum stands where once the sights and sounds of steam engines passed.